In today's video, I do a comparison of the 4K60 modes on both the Canon EOS R7 and R6 using the Canon 70-200 EF f4 lens and Canon's VND adapter. Now, I've been waiting a little bit to do this because I wanted to shoot a subject that had a decent amount of movement in it. So for today's video, we went to the wake park in Miami, shot some wakeboarding with my buddy Diego, and I got various shots with the R6 and the R7, and the lighting was changing a decent amount. So I kept filming and then got to a point where the lighting was consistent for a little bit, so I was able to actually shoot a test with similar lighting using both camera and lens combination. By the way, if you like the content you're seeing in today's video, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest content from the channel. After looking at the footage from both cameras, I think we can come up with a few conclusions. Yes, the R6 is slightly sharper in 4K60 than the R7, however, I think it really depends on your lighting because if your lighting is really good, the difference isn't as big of a deal. And then also when you're uploading to YouTube, I think the difference in quality kind of gets lost in the compression uploading to a digital platform like YouTube. If you're doing things like wedding videography or just videography in general where you're not necessarily uploading to the web, then I think the sharpness between the R6 and the R7 definitely does make a difference. But if you're just uploading to the web and your lighting's pretty decent, then in the end, I think the better lighting trumps the sharper image of the R6 over the R7. Now, of course, with the R6, since it is closer to that full frame field of view, you are gonna get a slightly more shallow depth of field in all of your images. However, after looking at the images from both R6 and R7, I think we're so telephoto on the 70 to 200 that it isn't making as big of a deal as if we shot on a wider lens. So it's interesting to see these comparisons I think that the 4K60 on the R7 isn't quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. Now, if you put the 4K60 on the R7 against the 4K24 fine mode on the R7, I think you're going to see a bigger difference in the image quality because then, you know, you have the line skipped 4K60 versus the downscaled from 7K 24p on the R7. And so you're definitely going to have a bigger difference in the sharpness as the 4K60 mode on the R6 is downscaled from around 5.2K. So obviously you have 5.2K in the 24p and 60p on the R6. And then you just have the downscaled 7K on only the 24p mode on the R7. I think in the end, if you're shooting in great lighting on both cameras, the difference isn't going to be as big as you think it would be. However, you can definitely see the difference more in poorer lighting conditions. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're going to shoot in lower light or poorer lighting conditions, you may want to pick up the R6 for that 4K60. It really depends on what you're shooting. When it comes to wakeboarding, you know, I shot wakeboarding for over 10 years. And one of the biggest problems with shooting outdoor action sports is you're kind of dependent on the weather. So when it comes to shooting action sports, it's kind of a toss up on whether I'd want to use the R6 or the R7 because the R6, as great as it is in 4K60, since it is sharper, it does overheat a lot in 4K60, which I don't really have that issue on the R7. So it's not just about the sharpness in the 4K60, it's also about the trade-offs. And I think if you're someone who's filming wakeboarding in Florida, for instance, where it's really hot, I think although the R6 may have technically better video quality in 4K60 than the R7, it's gonna overheat a lot quicker. So it doesn't really matter if you can't shoot with your camera because that's the biggest overheating function of the R6 is that it just overheats all the time in 4K60 since it's always being downscaled from 5.2K. 
And I think that's why you don't have that issue as much, not only on the R7, but now with the R5 with its firmware update, because on both of those cameras, you're not getting a downscaled 4K60 you are getting a line skip 4K60. And in the end, like the conclusion I came to before, I think if your lighting's on point, it's not really going to matter as much, especially if you're going to the web. So I hope you all enjoyed these wakeboarding shots. It is a little bit different from the normal, but I wanted to have something with a decent amount of action in it so I could slow the footage down. If you like the wakeboarding shots, you have any comments, questions, you want to see more with the 4K60 from the cameras, or really any other tests you want to see between the R6 and the R7, make sure to ask in the comments below. And if you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos on the channel. Until next time, my name is Jeff Fagan. Thank you for watching, everybody, and I will see you in the next video.